Yo guys, welcome back to the swamp. It's the Punk Frog Gamers here. I'm your host with the most Maximo here, back again bringing you more Call of Duty Black Ops 3. And in this video, we're going to be covering the specifics and all we need to know about the submachine gun, the Razorback. And in this video, we will be figuring out whether it is the best SMG in Black Ops 3 Online and whether it's the best gun to use in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Alright guys, so we're gonna start off with some gameplay of the Razorback in the background while I tell you all the specifics about it. So the Razorback does damage from 30 to 19, and it, uh, the weapon class is submachine gun obviously, the magazine side is, holds 30 rounds, 42 if you have an extended mag. Now it's unlocked for uh, single player at, at level 8 and multiplayer at level 46. The starting ammunition is 30 plus 90, uh, maximum ammunition is 30 plus 240. So the rate of fire is 625 rate per minute, and the range is 23 meters to 76 meters. So it's pretty good for longer range, but not too long range. So it's kind of like, you know, reasonable distances. If you're in like the courtyard and stronghold, or if you're close by someone in havoc or something like that. So not too long. And the recoil is low. Obviously, if you have the attachments to make it, you know, not recoil at all, you can fix that. And the fire mode is fully automatic. Now for having a magazine count at an average rate. The fire rate's pretty average, and the damage being very average, it can easily be outgunned by the majority of SMGs. However, what gives it an edge is the medium to long range gunfights. That's what distinguishes this from many other of the good SMGs we come to know and love, such as the Cuda or the Weevil. Now I'm going to talk about the effects of all the attachments that you can add to it to make it good or worse than you would actually originally think. So adding rapid fire can make it a more viable weapon up close and it doesn't affect the recoil too much so you don't have to worry about that. Certain attachments such as foregrip make it unnecessary because due to the Razorback's already high accuracy, it won't really help it that much. A silencer will reduce the range of the Razorback, which doesn't really help it at all because that's mainly the Razorback's positive side. So that will only reduce its usefulness at medium and longer range. Long barrel is a good attachment to use for a lot of SMGs and definitely including the Razorback because it'll further its already long range and it'll improve it in medium to even longer range battles than you already thought you could achieve. The Razorback also already has very good mobility so certain attachments such as quick draw and grip won't help it any. And if you check the in-game description it actually says full auto submachine gun, best accuracy in class, and ideal for mid-range engagements. So there you go, that's what the game thinks of it. It's pretty on point with what I've said so far. And now let's get to my personal opinions about the Razorback. So as you guys can see by the current gameplay, I'm doing pretty well for most of this, but overall I'm not doing very well with my KD. Now the Razorback has been working very well in the mid-range battles, as I've been saying throughout the video. So it's good for that, of course. However, when I get myself in one-to-one -one encounters with someone close by, Definitely with shotgun or something better like a VMP, Vesper, Cuda, you name it, they're probably gonna win. I'm not even joking. Now, when it comes to getting gold and diamond camos for the SMGs, I'm currently working on that. And the one of the last two guns that I have left is in fact the Razorback. Now, one of the reasons it's such a pain to get gold and therefore get diamond on is simply due to the fact that it takes so long to actually be able to unlock the Razorback. As I told you, in multiplayer, um, it unlocks at level 46. So, if you're thinking about prestiging like I did in another video, you can go check it out. There's a link. It'll be an annotation on the screen. But if you're considering prestiging again, and you have the permanent unlock, and you're not sure which gun to use, I would honestly highly recommend Razorback. Um, because as of my personal experience, it takes so long to get this one, and therefore, you know, the headshots take longer, and I don't want to delay when I'm prestiging, because I'm trying to get to ma max prestige as soon as possible, right? So, I just, I would definitely consider if you're trying to get gold on the Razorback and you haven't yet, I would just hit a permanent unlock on that, because now I can work on it as I'm trying to level back up to where I was earlier, and I don't have to go through the process of getting to level 46, so that I can start getting some more headshots on it. So back to the overall view and opinion of the Razorback. Is it the best gun in the SMG class? Uh, that's tough. Maybe for long range, mid range, I'd definitely say yeah it is. Accuracy? Again, maybe so. Mobility? There you go. However, it has many disadvantages to it that other SMGs just, you know, they top it in their ability. I'm sorry, but it's true. 
So would this be the best SMG in the class? I say no. Honestly man, with the tough competition it has with the CUDA and the other SMGs, it's tough to put this one at the top of anyone's list. And with it being such a hassle to get gold on, I just can't rank it any higher than like maybe 3rd, 4th place on the SMG list. And uh, unfortunately not the top gun in Call of Duty. Ever. Looking beyond that, I'd definitely say it's a great gun and I would highly recommend it for beginners that may want a lot more accuracy to play with or they're trying to get more into mid to long range uh, battles with their SMGs. I would definitely recommend it to them. But unless it gets any significant buff, it's not the best gun for most advanced players and I can't really recommend it to them. If you have any other thoughts or details on the weapon that I haven't included already in this video, I'd love to hear them in the comment section below. And if you have any other ideas for any other weapons that maybe you want to just hear me review or talk about for any other reason, then let me know in the comment section below. That's all I have to say about my review, I hope you found it useful. If you did, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, and of course, please subscribe for more high quality commentaries and gameplays, daily content that you do not want to miss out on. And we hope to see you next time at the Swamp.